Unicycles are notoriously hard to control for humans, especially since they share none of the self-stabilizing qualities that bicycles have. Unicyclists rely on four types of inputs. Wheel torque, provided by pedaling, and yaw torque, roll torque, and pitch torque, provided by the rider twisting and leaning their body. Existing unicycle controllers have already achieved good results optimizing within this four-dimensional space. For example, Robin Sharp succeeded in solving for complex maneuvers such as lane changes and clothoid trajectories using these four inputs. According to that paper, while pitch torque is known to be trivial to optimize independently from the other inputs simply by keeping the rider upright, yaw and roll torque are both essential to human control of a unicycle. The question is, if traditional unicyclists can turn utilizing a mix of twisting and leaning, is it possible to turn just by leaning, without any yaw torque at all? This should only be theoretically possible due to the gyroscopic effect of the wheel, which is exactly what our controller relies on. Previous research has already concluded that the gyroscopic effect for bicycles and unicycles hardly contributes to stability at all. For example, Hugh Hunt proved using a backward spinning wheel that even in the absence of gyroscopic effects, a bicycle is still self-stabilizing, with barely any noticeable difference. This, however, is an artifact of the fact that bicycles and unicycles have wheels that are very light, magnitudes lighter than the rider on top. If we scale the wheel's mass and radius to become a dominant inertial component of the system, we can make the gyroscopic effect noticeable enough to stabilize the system and make turns. Now, let's define the variables of the system. First, we have our state variables. We have yaw, we have x and y, both defined in the frame of yaw. We have the wheel angle, and we have the roll of the unicycle and the roll of the rider relative to the unicycle. We also keep track of the derivatives of all of these state variables with respect to time. Next, we have our inputs, wheel torque and roll torque. We don't include pitch torque because of its trivial role in control. Finally, we have contact forces friction in the x and y directions. We'll be solving for all of these variables at all time steps simultaneously using direct collocation. That means we'll even be using direct collocation to solve for the contact forces. Notice we don't need to solve for normal force since we assume the unicycle is grounded at all times. Now, what is direct collocation? Essentially, by constraining our trajectory to a cubic spline and our input and contact forces to a piecewise linear function, a mathematical program can efficiently solve for only a set number of knot points, and we can easily interpolate for the intermediate collocation points. There is a major problem with this, however. Since our contact force constraints are only enforced at these knot points, it means the dynamics are only an estimate. Ideally, the speed of the unicycle should match the speed of the wheel at all times. However, as you can see, these speeds only match at the knot points. We use 25 knot points for both of these examples. Besides that, our model managed to perform pretty well. Unfortunately, the solver is a little sensitive to initial and final conditions. For example, if the final state is facing the opposite direction of the initial state, the solver is unlikely to find a solution. We think this is because our initial trajectory guess, which we set as a first order interpolation from the initial state to the final state, becomes a poor guess in the psi xy coordinate system as the final yaw diverges from the initial yaw. Also, there is still room for optimization since the solver still performs suboptimal movements. However, now we can defini definitively say that with a sufficiently heavy wheel, you can ride a unicycle without twisting your body at all, using nothing but the gyroscopic effect.